right, welcome back to Friday Briefing. It's now time for us to get to learn some proper English pronunciations. And of course, joining me live and direct from Kisumu City is Willis the Word Master. Willis, it's great to see you. Um, joining you from a bit farther <laughs> than Nairobi County. But Willis, um, as we of course yes. wait to hear from you, I just want us also to just hear out a word on the street. And even I can't pr pronounce it. I can only just spell it out. And it's C-I-N-E-A-S-T-E. -E. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Willis is going to help us. But before he does so, let's just watch a word on the street. Signist, 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 sinist, 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 sinist. In it, scientist. All right, so because I don't even know how to pronounce that word, I can't even giggle like I normally do at Word on the Street. But Willis, let me bring you in, Willis. You are the master of pronunciations. Like I mentioned, it's great to see you, Willis. Uh, give us tonight's lesson. I'm just going to be listening from Meru County, where we're doing our show live from. Willis, over to you. <laughs> Betty, that is just the word. You've just put it right because, you know, we've been watching you also from Meru and it's quite a lovely, you know, uh, scenery there. In fact, the background, wonderful. The work itself, great. But straight now to the word on the street. Betty, this word is rare, but it refers to a person who knows a lot about films or movies. So those who are in the film industry or those who have a lot to do with movies, they will tell you they are used to this word. But the pronunciation is seniorst, seniorst. Most people find themselves saying siniste, sinist, and all that, but you say seniorst. So our dear viewers, this word is seniorst, not siniste, not siniaste, and all that. Now, we'll go straight to the words that already I have been prepared well for tonight by my director this side. Remember, in Meru, things are running so smoothly, and in Kisomo, remember you're watching KTN. Anyway, when we talk about the verb prefer, prefer, when it comes to the noun form, the noun form, many people find themselves saying preference, but that is not the way it should be. You say preference, preference. You have the verb prefer, but this one is preference. Don't say preference, you say preference. Just like you say confer and then conference. Refer, reference, not reference or reference. Reference, no. Preference, no. So you say preference and reference. Then we also have conference. The second word, when we talk about a deep feeling of sadness that lasts for a long time and often cannot be explained, we have a word that is tricky to many people, especially when we have uh, literature you know, as a, a study for some of us. Then when you talk about that deep feeling of sadness, you find some people talking of what exactly is not the word that is mispronouncing this word. You say melancholy, melancholy. Don't say melancholy or melancholy, melancholy. That is the acceptable or the correct pronunciation. Then we have a verb from what I can see right here, C-H-I-D-E. This verb, that is to blame or criticize somebody because they have done something wrong, many people get confused. They wonder whether we should say kaid, shied, or chied. The last one is the acceptable pronunciation of this word. You say chied, chied, not kaid. You say chied. And remember, you also say chime. That is to ring when we are talking about a clock. You say to chime, not to kaim. Then... The next word is this one. And we are talking 
about you know, an adjective that means strange in a way that is unpleasant or offensive. So many people find themselves talking of or pronouncing this word as grotesque. You. you don't say that. That is a mispronunciation. You say grotesque, grotesque. The good or acceptable, or if you like, you can say accurate pronunciation of this word is grotesque. So when you also talk about mosque, don't say mosque. You, you say plaque, not plaque. You. Remember, you also say picturesque, picturesque, not pictures cue. So U and E are not pronounced in those words. Then we have a word that I know at home. Our dear viewers, I want to give you just one second right there at home. I know you're watching. Can you try to pronounce this word with those who are with you, maybe in the living room, if you like, the sitting room and all that? Just a second. Can you try? Well, if you said congestion, Congestion, which is very common, you got it wrong. You say congestion, congestion. Just like we say digestion, suggestion, and question. A very popular word on Mind Your Language segment here on KTN, and you say congestion. Avoid saying congestion, you say congestion. So that one, I hope you've got it right. Now, we have the next word, very tricky. The confusion is we have the verb sever, to sever, that is to cut links, to sever. Then the past tense or the past participle is severed, severed. That is the word I'm cutting here on paper. And don't say severed or severed. The confusion is we have the adjective that is severe severe, which many people also mispronounce as severe, but it's severe. That adjective severe is not connected to this word. This is the past tense of the verb sever, to cut links. So just say severed, severed. Don't say severed, don't say severed. Now, our next word is, yes, it's right here. That is to agree to do something or to give in. To agree to do something or to give in, you say capitulate, capitulate. Don't say capitulate, capitulate. Don't say that. Say capitulate with the stress coming on the second syllable. That is the primary stress. You say ka, then pitulate, capitulate. That is to agree or to do something or to give in. Then when we talk about somebody being unable to speak, Many people find themselves saying dumb, dumb. But that M and B are not functioning as a digraph. That is a combination of two letters representing one sound. Just like mbolea or mboga in Kiswahili. It's not applicable when you are pronouncing this English word. This English word is pronounced as dumb. You say dumb. The B is not pronounced. Deaf and dumb. Then you also say numb, not numb. Cram or bread crumbs, not crumbs. Just like you say bomb, not bomb. Bomber, not bomber. So getting it right is always very, very important when it comes to clear or effective communication. Delivery of intended messages in a clear or effective way. Now, dear viewers, we have the feedbacks. The first person is Herbert Makacha. You say Boas, that is stock exchange, especially in Paris or in uh, France. Boas, B-O-U-R-S-E. Don't say the boss because of the word course. The course that you take when you're studying something is not related to the same letter sequence in B-O-U-R-S-E. That is Boas. Nancy Ndabuki of Machakos. Oh, it's now uh, that season. That is the FIFA World Cup season. And she's talking about two countries. Very tricky. You say Uruguay, Uruguay. And you also have Paraguay. James Oguku of Mochengo, that is Ebiosi Mochengo, you say Malays. Pamela Kangede Nyuguna, oh, your spelling is like, uh, but take it easy because we all make mistakes. When you make a mistake, sometimes it's better just to accept it because you can learn from that mistake. So Pamela Kangede Nyuguna of Kiambu, you say sculpture, sculpture. Vulture, 
culture. Thomas O, locally people say Thomas, but that H is not pronounced. Thomas Ogoti of Nyamataro Kisi, you say Dencha. Dencha. Catherine Char of Mombasa, pigsty. Mark Kipsang, you say athlete. Faith Domtila, Jeffrey Otieno, Evans McKenna, Jeffrey Ogori, thank you so much. You say excellent, not excellent, excellent. Regan Kubai of Sunshine, School of Langata, that is in Langata, you say paraphernalia. Barak Nyamwea and Vincent, oh, Vincent Obare Manuguti. Barak Nyamwea of Nyakoi Highway, you say hodgepodge, hodgepodge. Ahmed Guhad of Garissa, egregious, egregious. That is, we are talking about extremely bad, egregious. Job or John Maina of Amboseli, you say mauve, mauve. That is pale purple in color. But dear viewers, because of time, I'll leave it at that, especially those who have sent in the words next week. I promise to ensure that I cover all that you've asked about. Let's go straight to the surprise word for tonight. You say thwart, to thwart a move, to thwart a plan, to thwart. Don't say thwart. Thwart, no. Just like you say what, W-A-R-T, what, what hog. Warrant, a warrant of arrest. Warren, and you also say warrior, not warrior. And then finally, we have the confusing words. M-A-U-L is pronounced with the long sound O. That long sound O represents the digraph A-U. If you can see A and U between M and L, that is a digraph. A digraph is a combination of two letters representing one word. That is one sound, I beg your pardon. You say mole for the upper word, mole, just like whole, H-A-U-L, whole, M-A-U-L, mole, mole. But the lower word is having what we call a vowel glide, a slight vowel glide. You say mole, mole. The upper one, mole, long sound O. The lower one, mole, that is the vowel glide O, and keeping English to be English in terms of the sounds. We may not be perfect, and none of us can be perfect, and none of us can also know everything in a language, but try your best to be accurate because knowledge, and that is definite knowledge, is in books. Betty, back to you and our entire crew in Meru. But we plan I come to the studio. <sighs> All right, all right, in case you're wondering who I'm talking to, Bahati. But Willis, thank you so much for tonight's lesson. Really appreciate it. We'll see you again next week, uh, of course, on Friday Briefing. And remember, you can always follow him on Twitter at Willis Ching one That's his Twitter handle.